Look out, footy's back. Welcome to AFLW Today, your one-stop shop for all things AFLW. I'm your host, a slightly sleep-deprived Alex Donnelly, but not as sleep-deprived as my co-host, Bryony Dawson, who is just here but not here. Hey, guys. Ready to go, ready to go. How I'm just you? going straight in. There is no preamble today because we're talking about week one of the AFLW Finals and a guy who's been partying like it's 1996 all over again <laughs> is the stats guy now that North Melbourne are into a prelim final. Let's Woo! go, North. We're back at it again. I'm still nervous because we always get to this point, but I'm hopefully hoping... I don't know why I said hopefully, hopefully hoping. Hoping. that is not what I was trying to say. Hoping we keep going all the way and we uh, get another win. As I uh, mentioned with some, or not mentioned, I got told by some North fans on Friday night that I met when I was at Icon Park. They're like, this is the greatest team ever. I'm like, why? It's like, well, it we've is. sung our men's team, our team song 11 times in three years. Yeah. We wow. have now sung it 11 times in 11 weeks. Yeah. Well, I'm we had a draw. That. I'm happy we had with that. We won 11 games. We won 11. Ten, you were 10 and 1, and now you've won the first final. Sorry, my bad. You're yeah, right. Yeah. 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 Careful stats. Guys. I know. I'm just like, I lost count of all the wins. I lost count of all the wins. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> Imagine a North fan saying <laughs> that. Uh, <laughs> stats guy is happy. We're also going to fire him out of the sun at some point. Yes. Because intern Jordan's going to come and hang out because, well, Jordan covered the Sunday game. So this Why is going to be sweet. Excellent. Bring in for the. Return, because we had the debut last week. The debut? Yeah, the debut. <laughs> okay. Last week. Uh, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please follow us there. Hit the notification bell so anytime we drop some content, it'll come your way. There's chips ratings coming out the wazoo. We finally dropped the Arden Street ones. Icon Park Street ones coming your way. Yes. Of course, on the social medias, what is it? TikTok, Instagram, and X. It's AFLW today. Get around it, because can you smell it? Footy is back! Finals. <laughs> finals, good footy. Finals. Yes. Can I just say... Yeah. You know, we're very available online, this yeah, podcast. Yeah, we're terminally online. My mum still can't find it. <laughs> She's Just like, everywhere we go, I someone says they see today show. Bless her little cotton socks, babe. Does she <laughs> know how Just... Google works? No, Google. She follows I us on Instagram because so. she likes all of our stuff. Yeah, there and you I'm go. like, just click the link in the post that I share. No, yeah. can't do click, that. Click the link in the in the uh, bios as well. We've got a link tree. It'll take you to everything that we've got going on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, so we'll go through all of these finals. She's I gotta just... wait till the end of the season. Just listen to them all. Yeah. Oh my god, <laughs> that's a yeah. lot of. There's now a stream she'll do of... it while she does her knitting. There's, you know? a, there's a stream Perfect. of consciousness there. I'm sure of it. <laughs> uh, so we'll go through all these finals. The finals were great, and we'll, of course we'll ask how the fan base is feeling. But we're yes. gonna take a quick look. So Nathan Burke, former St Kilda player, former Western Bulldogs coach, yep. who got unceremoniously dumped because well his team didn't go great last year, called for an AFLW training audit. Basically. He was complaining because, uh, what is it, a minimum amount, of, maximum amount of hours per week you're allowed in at the club. I think it's 22 hours for the players. 22. It's going up to 25 next year. Okay. And he's like, well, some teams do more. No, I like what he said. I I've like heard, what he said I heard too. from I people that I know that like players and staff and things like that, where every team has different sort of uh, rules. expectations and rules. There should be some rules just so that everyone, I think it will help grow the game if everyone's at that sort of highest level. It doesn't have to be the hours, but just everyone has that similar sort of rules because there's some teams that are doing a lot less and that well, was that, evident. That's yeah. why they're losing. Yeah, that's the my The teams point. like yeah. North and Brisbane who are doing more as a discussion I had with someone yeah. on Friday night after North One was like, well, yeah, we're trying to plan a trip in the off season, but we they apparently we're going to find out the dates of next season, like this week or next week. Mm -hmm. So we're waiting to hear that. But you've got the real preseason, but then there's also the preseason before the preseason where mm -hmm. the girls get together and do all of their extras. So there are players who are willing to do extras. And I think this shows because some apparently going, oh, well, they need 22 hours. Peace. Yeah. Heaps, yeah. heaps are. That's a bad And there's a couple out. of reasons behind that. And I think Nathan Burke called this out last year yeah, when he was he coaching did, the Bulldogs right. and mm. he said their main problem was that they're unfit. Mm. And so... That didn't go down well. Nope. And then he stuck to his guns, like rightfully so, because there is, I mean, there is that that minimum call, 22 hours, yep. which is fine. But because players aren't paid enough, they need to have extra paid jobs. Enough, they're and still you working have, and tired. You know, yeah. so yep. all of that kind of stuff. And that needs to be managed. So, yes, there is extra work that players can do. Yeah. Um, and I guess that comes down to your recruiting and your scouting and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And the question being asked, can you commit to these extra hours? Mm. And that should play a, a a role in whether someone gets pulled onto the team or not. Yeah, no, I agree. It just comes back to give them more money so they don't need to be a Weird. barista or a yes. traffic controller. True. But he also mentioned it um, in terms of coaching staff oh, as yeah. well because the assistant coaches can only get uh, only paid between 10, 15, 
twenty thousand oh, dollars. A go. good, like a really, really, really good one is thirty thousand. And they're both putting a lot of hours sal- in. And that's yeah. in your salary crap. And are okay. you going to spend that extra ten on an assistant coach? Thirty thousand for technically a sixteen week season. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of. Gross. Yeah, so they need to have other jobs as well. So it, it comes. It, there's a lot more mm. in it than that. And I think of all the points that he has raised is really good. Yeah, and I yeah, good. I think it probably there probably does need to be an audit. Only if there is capacity to act on the recommendations that are made out of that audit. Yep. If there's no space, stuff the audit. It doesn't need to be done yet if you can't act on any yeah. of it. Oh, no, good call. So good call. Yeah. Yep. These ones. Just just these. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's not even that. It's just so that every it, it will make the competition better if everyone's sort of on the same. Because yeah, I heard a couple of years ago, we've seen a lot of people leave the Bulldogs. It wasn't the best uh, training environment. It wasn't very professional a few years ago. So hopefully that all the teams are on the same page. Yeah, but if half your team isn't showing yeah. up, if, yeah, I'm, exactly. if I'm working if you're the my best ass off. And the other players around you, that's what I heard. If yeah. I even yeah. if I'm not the best player, if yeah. I'm working my ass mm. off and some sprints. slack. Yeah, and they're still there, getting picked. For the and they're getting picked on oh, like, hundred percent. That'd be so frustrating. I would be annoyed at you. Yeah, and then that's there's that. So team that's what culture. was happening at the dogs, apparently. Yeah, yeah, which is not good. But hopefully, apparently that, no. That it was. It was. It was. Like, yeah. There's no apparently about yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. Uh, the AFL did finally lock in the night grand final. We knew it. We talked about it last week. I'm all for it. I'm excited. Seven I, ten I, start. I hope they get a really like a good act. What was last year was G Flip was was awesome. Awesome. So that was really good. So just call G Flip again. G Flip rules. G Flip no, again. No, the... no G Flip rules. <laughs> it was good. G Flip is the face of the AFLW yeah, music. So true. get get them to come in, Lady Marmalade. Maybe try and play up there, Kazali G Flip style. I'm all for it. Oh, oh my god, that'd be cool. no. <laughs> hey, um, up there, Kazali rules. <laughs> Does it though? <laughs> this is one thing I'm willing to go to war about. <laughs> <laughs> it's the highlight of my grand final because my team keeps getting smashed. Um, I am Katie very Perry. excited about the night grand final. Be good, yeah. Other than the fact that I won't be able to be there because I'm hosting the oh, netball. The netball. Yeah, the netball's on at the same time. No, the netball MVP awards. Okay. They're, they're big awards. Just ceremony. in the. In the- Behind the uh, stage. Just yeah, pretty much. Oh, no, there's 100% going to be an iPad off the screen. Oh, yeah, and uh, the Melbourne Vixens best. Oh, my God, what a goal! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, crap, I'm on the mic still. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm, de- I'm annoyed. Uh, I'm wait, really devastated. Will that be because last year was a Sunday? No, it's Saturday night. It's Saturday, Saturday night. Right? It's Saturday night. The Sunday night is the WBBL final. Okay, so cool. ticks to the AFL for not scheduling against Same. something. Okay, cool. We'll get to that again later. <laughs> uh, Injuries from the weekend, we look clear apart from Matty Prasparkas' hip, which it looked weird. It was weird, and I I think it's a corky, and she oh, just She didn't come back on, she didn't. But it wasn't. Yeah, she, because she was trying to run it out. Yeah. She took she a mark couldn't. and was like, did yeah, No, I think it happened before that. Yeah, okay. I think it happened yeah. before that, and she was trying to run yeah. it out. Do you remember your first corky? Yes. Yeah, you don't know what you're like. You, you're you're like, like, you got shot and you're like. Argh. The first time you get corked and yeah. the first time you get winded oh, are two of the scariest is, yeah. cramps, times. Cramped as well. Oh, cramped yeah. Oh, cramped oh, cramped that's is the weird. worst. Yeah. yeah. No, the first corky is wet. Yeah. First corky I have, like, I was like, I was pushing away from like the pain, like pushing away on the grass going, I don't know what's happening. Yeah. Ran it out and then the next day couldn't walk. Yeah. Like, yeah it's weird. I, got, I was on crutches I got, for a week. I got, <laughs> I got through the game and I had this big bruise on my quad. So I couldn't play the next week. He's like, I can't run. Yeah. I couldn't run for a week and a half. Yeah. Because, yeah, people go, oh, it's, it's just a cock. You can run it off. You no. can't always. It doesn't oh, it's ridiculous. I got yeah. hit in the perfect spot on my cock. <laughs> yeah. It was so bad. Mine went right into the belly of the back of my calf. Oh. And so the whole thing. Oh, it just like goes. Goes like this. Yeah, and then I've it tightens, that, tightens. And then oh. you can't plant your foot flat. Yeah. And so I couldn't, I couldn't oh. walk for like a week. So mine was on the side of my quad where your quad muscle, where you've got that little gap oh, between your yeah. quad. Yeah, uh, and yeah. I got whacked right there. Not great. Yeah. Injuries today. This yeah, is this is great. <laughs> um, on a life well lived. Yeah. <laughs> so do we want to look at the finals matchup or who's gone through and who's gone home? Because yeah, go for it. Uh, Why not? I can we start with so that? So we yeah. start with that. So Friday night, North Melbourne, straight through to a prelim final. They'll be hosting at Icon Park. I assume they'll be hosting their preliminary final on a Friday night at Icon Park. Yeah. Giving them the maximum break possible to the grand final. Should be. Then the next the next day or the next night, Brisbane will be hosting a prelim at, uh, I'm assuming, out at Brighton Homes Arena. Yeah, it will be, yeah. This weekend, obviously, we've got the game at Icon Park Saturday afternoon with uh, Hawthorne hosting uh, Port Adelaide. Port Adelaide, completely spaced on that. And oh, that's uh, Saturday night, Saturday actually. night, sorry. It's yeah. at 7.30, yes. And then the uh, 3.35 is Adelaide and yeah. Frio. So 3.35, Adelaide and Frio. Adelaide Norwood. hosting after losing mm-hmm. uh, to North Melbourne and Frio after getting the job done over Essendon. So The Hawks-Port one, I'm very... 
Yeah. So both can show they've kicked your score, but I'm I reckon Adelaide could smoke them, which I was we'll about get to say later. We'll no, get that into no, later. Give in the week. just a quick prediction on who's going to win these two finals. So Hawth- Hawthorne and Port Saturday night. Hawks, Hawks, Port. Oh, oh what? Yeah. Okay. Crow's- you like Tickle back in, don't you? Yeah. 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 Loved it. Yeah, I like, like, like Saint. I'll awesome. get to it. Yes, oh, Saint. Okay. We'll get yeah, to it later. Uh, and I think the Crows, the Crows do what they did to the Swans last year, but this time to Freo. Yeah, yeah. I reckon they'll smash them. Yeah. yeah, they'll smash them. All right, let's get to the games. Let's go through these Friday. Yes. Icon go. Park, good crowd, good times, a lot of chip vendors. North Melbourne, 5 8 38, defeated the Adelaide Crows, 5 1 31. So I'm just going to get to my overall thoughts on this game at, straight away before we go into the game. I'm now going to be trying to keep convincing myself that North Melbourne are potentially beatable, but at the same time, like, no, nah, they're just not going to lose. It's not a win. Because you walk away going, mm. oh, yeah, they're beatable. It's like, no, nah, they're just going to find a way because yeah. half time, I'm like, Crows are on, Crows are on. Mm. And then North are just like, no, nah, not happening. Yeah, I think it shows that North has really the team that's got that depth at the moment, whereas that's always been Adelaide. Yes. And I feel like all season we've been waiting for Adelaide to kick into that second gear and be like, no, 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 we're Adelaide, we're Adelaide. And they just couldn't get it done against North. No, they, the <sighs> first half, they were, they were so good. They just didn't, didn't kick a score on the board. I think North had the lead at quarter time and then half time just because Adelaide just couldn't kick a goal. The defense from North, me and North fan, I was so excited. Yeah. We hardly ever talk about that. You talk about the forwards from North, talk about the, the mids from North, uh, North. Birch, Wright, and Ferguson as the three main backs from North were just mm-hmm. unbelievable. Only allowed eight shots from 31 inside 50s for Adelaide. So 26%. It, like, was it was Adelaide's fault a couple of times going inside 50s oh. and poor kicks. But then and there some, was so like many out of bounds on the, out of bounds like on the ones that should have gone directly through the middle. Went, they look so off. But could, then a couple of times it was the like just like just like uh, yeah. every time it went because on the scoreboard, you know, five one thirty one, you kind of like doesn't well, reflect it as much. Not, yeah. But I'm like, no, they went out on the full. They had one. They had more uh, inside fifties. Yeah, but they had way less scoring shots. They were just absolutely good killing defense. you in the first half. Yeah, killed us in the first half. The, the speed on the ball. I think people around me were saying. Oh geez, we look so slow today, and that's never happened watching a North game because you love North. Adel- Adelaide's the pressure was up, but they were also yeah. using the outlet ball, getting it out wide straight away, and yeah. transitioning very quickly. Yeah. And then half time happened, and North adapted, and Adelaide were like, "Oh, what, what are we, we doing? doing?" We also changed that- our tactics. Crocker, I was the North, like North fans in my family were going, "What are you doing?" We flooded in the first half, and then we we look up. I think Amy Smith got it a couple of times. Taylor got, got it a couple of times. Looked up on the wing. Not one North player nah, and nah. three Adelaide. Horrible tactics. And then we didn't do that in the second half. So I was, it was like how uh, Bulldogs played at, at certain yeah. times. Essendon played. Yeah. Very unlike North. It was yeah. it was a bit weird. And then the second half fired up. And Talia was Randall yeah. was getting double teamed the whole game. Yes. Because Adelaide just, from the start, uh, we're just going to have someone basically is the goalkeeper. And it's like, we're just going to sit on two people on Talia Randall. Good defensive tactics, and it yeah. worked horrendously. Mm. It was horrendous. I don't like usually calling out someone for being worst on ground, but Zoe <laughs> Prowse had a night to forget. Oh, jeez, <laughs> mate. I didn't think you were going to say that. Oh, no. How, like, gave away the gave away the deliberate goal. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Like, the deliberate yeah. rush behind, which... Wait, uh, that's not deliberate. Yeah, it, it is. was someone in the goal score. Oh, from my, was no, there someone in the goal score? you have to make an attempt. If there's someone there I to thought, give it off to, yeah. you have to give it off. She'll, if there's an opportunity, okay, it's like, yeah, yeah, Was the there someone there? I, I was Sheila the was, the was us to Jordan away and okay, close fair. enough. And it's like, uh, but in fairness, Kate Sheila's arms are like this long. Yeah, like, fair enough. Fair she enough. was definitely there. To, yeah. Like, she was definitely there yeah, of pressure. No, fair enough. But there was a player right next to her where yeah. they could have cleared. They yep. could have given it. It happened like five minutes. she didn't. And she got penalised. Yeah. Yeah, so that wasn't great. And I saw a lot of Adelaide fans complaining about it. I was like, just give the handball. Yeah. yeah. No, she uh, should have given the handball. But then also there was a couple of times like they'd go up for two-on-ones against Randall and the board somehow get out the back. It's like, how are you not working this out properly yeah. every time? Yeah. And just watch it because I, I I was with a mate who's good friends with Talia Randall, so we were going end-to-end at North's forward line. So I got a very good close look up at North's uh, forward line setup and Adelaide's defensive setup. It wasn't there first half. Second half was a lot better yeah. setup. Uh, I just thought the way that Adelaide set up, it was to try and contain rather than try to win. Yeah. Yeah. Their theory of, oh, we're behind. We're going to sit someone behind the ball. Yeah, you got to play wasn't great. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. when North got in front, they're like, right, oh, small people, get to full forward, Sheila, centre half back, Randall, centre half back. That was good. Yeah. That was a great decision yeah. by Crocker when, when they're in front. It's like, oh, we yeah. can save the game here. Yeah. yeah. So I think uh, Adelaide outcoached again. Yeah. Oh, he's there. I, yeah. First half, I think they tactics really good. And then they just didn't change when they were down. 
Bala Eddie was awesome too. Oh my Second, gosh, third she was goal, That goal was she was running towards the boundary. Just yeah. Yeah. absolute awesome this goal. This game had some good goals. She good had goals. 84.6% disposal oh. efficiency, 10 contested possessions Beautiful. and four score involvement. It's as like well. one of, there's about five or six players at North. Being a North fan, I sort of watch them a bit closer maybe. That just hardly get talked about because you got Riddell, you got Garner, you got Randall, you got, got Shearer. And then you got uh, Bala Eddie, Amy Smith, I think one of them yeah. kicked an awesome goal. Yeah. Uh, 17 disposals as well. But yeah, then you had Garner and Riddell, both had 29 plus disposals, nine plus clearances, six plus tackles. Literally, you could yeah split them for best on the ground. It's they're, stupid they're how amazing. much time she has when she has the football jazz she, Garner. Oh, she slows it's, the game it's like, down. It's, it's yeah. like it's in slow motion. Yeah. It's like she's got so much more time on the fast, ground than anyone she else. She doesn't need to be. Yeah. It's crazy. Um, I will say Chelsea Randall. Awesome, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I cannot get enough of her. <laughs> she is so explosive. Explosive mm. isn't even a good enough word for how no, she I plays. Agree. She's so intense. Had 22 disposals, two goals, two goals. six tackles. Oh. Like she is, she's unbelievable and was so instrumental in them Getting as close as they did. I think did. she was definitely their best player yeah. watching at the ground. I know you yeah. can always say Marinoff, Marinoff has good 31. stats, but, but I you think Randall was better. You what, didn't notice that as much. On the ground, you didn't notice Marinoff, Marinoff as much. You, know, as you Randall, noticed, yeah. Yeah, you noticed, yeah. you noticed, you noticed uh, Matty Newman like getting out wide early yeah. in the piece. You also noticed, yep. uh, who was it, uh, Munyard as well, like had a lot of the footy mm-hmm. like out on the wings. It's like, yeah. oh, they've got the footy again. And then the second half, is just like not happening because Jazz Ferguson, Birch and all that, just like, come on. Come at us. Great ball. Yeah, they just looked uh, like uncomposed yeah, and um, in that second half. And for the whole game, they only laid 11 tackles in their forward 50. Uh, yeah. for the that, whole, yeah. that felt right. That's like. When they had a lot no, of inside 50s. Yeah. yeah. When you had that many inside 50s, inside 50s, how yeah. easy was it for North to get the ball back? Yeah, but it, you had like. Ferguson, Birch, and a few others, just easy outlet handball or easy outlet chip kick yeah, to very someone. Calm, and it's like, very why calm. aren't you like manning up? Yeah. Get a, get a just, yeah. I was leaving this game, like, I'm probably the frustrated non Adelaide fan going, how have you managed to not win this game? Yeah. Well, they, you said that last time they played as well. I yeah. know. They they just, their, their forward line efficiency yeah. is not great. There was some just horrendous kicks. Then they went against what brought them to the dance in the first half and the second half. And it's like, uh, good luck. Yeah, yeah, I think North changed the tactics in the second half. Adelaide didn't adjust at all. That's yeah. what cost them mm. a little bit. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, fan bases. Uh, North Adelaide. Yes. Sick. Let's go. Another prelim. I'll be there. I can park. Adelaide fans are just headbutting the wall. It's like, yeah, they'll be frustrated. Yeah. That you know, they're so used to being the best team. They're so used to that depth, composure, um, and they're just they're a little bit off the pace. Yeah, I think they're relying too much on Randall and Marinoff. No, they're not relying on them. I think it's, there's not enough players stepping up. No, they yeah. just they. It's just they go against what works sometimes, and then they don't. They forget. They yeah. panic and just like long down the line, long down the line. Yeah. Rather than trying to use their asset, which is speed on speed, the outside. Yeah, that's why yeah. they killed us in the first half. Like true. Look, quick, quick handball gives. Look to your wings. Look to your flanks, and then come back inside to your forwards. Because anytime the ball went forward, Gordon Ponta were just there, like bring it on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it was forty-five meters out. It wasn't dangerous. Yeah. Good call. Gould was pretty good as yeah. well. I yeah, thought. Yeah. I thought they were both just taking grabs. Yeah. They both did. Yeah, two or good. Sorry, got two, and Ponta got one. They set she up a couple a few, of though. Missed a few. Yeah. yeah, there was a few that, like Alex was saying, they were getting it about forty out, <sighs> five out, forty out, and instead of trying to hit a target or give a quick hands or something, they were trying to have a shot and it would spray it out in the full because yeah. they're trying to kick it as far they're as they can. So the wasn't that breezy it. either? No, no, the breeze didn't really matter. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Saturday evening, yes. Fremantle Dockers 5 6 36 defeated the Essendon Bomb Rays 4 2 26. I'm going to say it right now if Bonnie Too Good and Matty Prasparkas play out this game, Essendon win. Mm. Uh, they, yeah, would have been no, closer. They win. They, I, I could probably back I that. I know Ash Brazel was a laid out, mm. which you know, out, sort yeah. of evens it out, but I think if Bonnie and Prasparkas play out a full game, there's two goals. Freo just, I, I wrote this down. I'm sure Eliza Riley will write something about this, uh, a friend of the show. Freo went goalless in the first term mm-hmm. for the seventh time this season. Yeah, it was a That t- is, but just, was... so if you go to a Freo game, just rock up at the second quarter because <laughs> they might win. They might win, but they're not going to. I think Freo are showing that? up at the second quarter. But, yeah, well. if, what are they but doing? if you watch the game, Freo dominated yeah, they the did. first half, yeah, the first quarter. Yeah. They just couldn't kick a goal. No, and then, yeah. then Essendon were like, ah, we're going to get two inside 50s and kick a goal. Yeah. <laughs> They do that. I don't know. It's similar to that Adelaide game. They just need to find. A, I know they obviously won the game, but they need to find a way to just get more goals. They're just not. I don't huh. know. How does every team feel? <laughs> we need to find a way to get no, more well, goals. Well, I don't, I, yeah. Anyway, that's, that's <laughs> a pretty obvious point. Did but, you yeah. did you call the Mimstrom 
um, hit out record for no, this week. I didn't. Call I thought it. you did. Well, I think we talked about the record the other week, but I don't think we said Where, which, she's going to uh, beat her. Okay. Yeah. She beat I her thought, own record. Uh, vibe, yeah, I yeah, thought. The, I thought you had the that vibeometer means. for Mim Strom is off the charts. Yes, yeah, she's every like, week. Old, she's getting better stats. She's ridiculous. Ultimate finals vibe player it, this this year for me is Mim Strom. Mm. If she brings that level on Saturday against the Crows, sick. Yeah, it's going to be fun because. Yeah. One of Adelaide's tools did go down early, which was a concern for them. Back to that game. Record anyway. hit outs, 55. Yeah, but then it's also, you know, 11 clearances, 26 disposals. Oh. You know you know how we have votes? Just give them all to Mim. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe one to Gabby O'Sullivan for the goal. That's about it. Yeah. But this this game, it was like, I always felt Freo were in complete control of this yeah. game. I never, th- I never yeah. thought Fremantle were going to lose, especially when Prasparkas went down. And then the last quarter when they had the wind, I'm like, they're just going to find a way to win this. Essendon's tactic of having someone a kick and a half behind in the footy when you're trying to win, probably not a good idea being mm-hmm. one short when you've got someone 70 metres behind. I know there's a wind and it's a big deck, but it's like, this isn't the way to do I it. I think the wind paid, played a massive yeah. part in that. Yeah, it made it trickier. Frio, yeah. And, yeah. That, and that goes to show Frio goalless in the first quarter, Essendon goalless in the last quarter. And yeah. the second, and I think, as well. Yeah, so it was a, it was a really hard um, hard win to play into. Yeah. Um, Emma O'Driscoll was awesome yeah. for Frio. Yeah. First time um, in a while, like been a bit up and down this yeah, year. But yeah, yeah, really yeah. Good. So yeah, she's she's awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, what did she have? Uh, have a quick look. Seven intercepts from her nine. Seven intercepts from her nine first quarter possessions. Oh, um, really? So yeah, That's it's awesome. like she's she's an absolute ripper. Mm. Um, who have we got? Lally O'Sullivan, yeah, they like Gabby Newton, twenty-one disposals, twenty tackles. Yeah, how do you how do you even have time to get twenty tackles? That's that's unbelievable. It's I think ridiculous. that's the most of the year, or maybe equal to Ed Marinoff. Possibly, I, think, I thought seventeen was seventeen. Well, twenty is just that's huge, just crazy. Like, and then just getting twenty-one disposals. Yeah, yeah. A Frio were really strong over the ball. I thought, yep. and the tackling, mm. like ferocity. Yeah, like it, they were just awesome. Yeah, we've talked up. Frio's defense and tackling pressure all year. That's just why I'm not that confident for the rest of the finals because you're only kicking 36 points compared to all these other teams that can kick. North on their Melbourne day. only kicked 38. I know, but they played against Adelaide, who are a much better defensive Hawthorne team. Hawthorne 32, Essendon. Brisbane 38. I'm just saying that every other team in the finals that is left can kick a score of 50 plus, and I, okay. I don't think Freo can. Mm. Yeah, got a point. Nan, Nance Gorn, your favorite. Nance it was Gorn really probably the best for Essendon. She only had, I think she still had under 20 possessions. 20, oh, exactly 20. Exactly 20. 20 and so, seven clearances. But yeah. Like, didn't get as much as, I don't know, 25, 30, yeah. which you can, but still really good. Yeah. yeah. Mm. But, yeah, I, I think there was – Prasparkas, because they've had so, – all their injuries, Essendon, have had really bad timing. Like, yeah. the last couple of weeks they've come up against really good rucks, they lo- lose their files. Before yeah. that, when they were uh, versing Freo the first time, sort of looked Bonnie in the game. Good Bonnie Tugu gets knocked Poor out. Poor Amber Clark got smashed again by I a know, teammate. Yeah. <laughs> Let's yeah. just quick – Amber <laughs> – what have you done wrong? <laughs> Why do your teammates hate you? What's the culture like at Essendon? <laughs> Just knocking each other out. Yeah. Oh, it's not good. Yeah. Not good. So but yeah. Freo, they, was, they were good defensively. They just, yeah, didn't probably kick enough goals. Though, mm. Obviously. Who cares? Freo they, won. they won anyway, so it doesn't matter. And Essendon still can't win a final. Yep. <laughs> if they had a full team, though, like you said, they would have been. wants to see Essendon men not win a final next year again or not make the finals and then the, not, and women, then the women win the win final. Win the first one. The That'd be good. good. I'm on board with that. Yeah, I'm on board with that. After what happened to them this year, they deserve a bit of luck. We like mm. a lot of their players as well. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Good, they're good, good hangs, good fun, you know, <laughs> good people. Fan bases, Freya, like, uh, can we name ourselves the Fremantle Stroms? Oh, the Stroms. Oh, the Stroms. <laughs> that just sounds very weird. <laughs> or the Frio Mims. The Mims. What are the two? The Mims. I was emceeing a gig last week, and because we've talked about Mim Strom so much, yeah. um, I read out someone's name like like an award winner. Their last name is Strong, and I oh, I just you strommed it. I strommed you strom- it. I strom- strom- totally strommed it. That sounds weird. It. Yeah, which sounds weird when you're trying to say someone like Strong, and you say Did Strom, and everyone goes say anything or. God bless Scooby Doo. Uh, and God fa- bless Scooby. No one has ever said that in th- that phrase in I their life. I was going more Tim God the Tall Man Taylor as uh, well. No, I was going Scooby Doo. Yeah. Old school. Yeah. Old school. Uh, Essendon fans like, yeah, finals. We don't win them. Sure. Oh, they play. They as an Essendon fan, they played well. 
I think they, they put did. up a good I th- fight to stay I defensively. Thought they, I thought that they did yeah. put up a really good fight. People last time they played, Freya smashed them. So yeah, pretty happy. All right, time for a rotation. We are actually due for one. We've had one all season, so we're going to bring that to two. Stats guys getting fired into the sun. He'll be back later on, but we're going to bring in the intern, Jordan. She's going to come in right now. If you like this show, make sure you check out all the other shows on the Sports Today Network, from the AFL Today Show to the Cricket Today Podcast, the Football Today Podcast, as well as NBA Australia and NFL Australia. With Sports Today, your sporting needs have never been easier to cover. All right, thanks to Jim for that awesome ad break. Now, bringing in yet another awesome jacket and a big personality behind the scenes here, we have Inter Jordan coming in. Well, this is a nice jacket. I'm on board with this. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> You've done very well, George. Yeah. Very I, well. I feel very underdressed. It's a little bit, it's like a little bit rock and roll. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like business, but I also like to party. <laughs> it's Which... like a, a jacket version of a mullet. <laughs> well, George is at uni, so probably a bit of both. I, yeah. I study, but I also party hard. Yeah. All right. We're here to talk about the Sunday games from the AFLW finals. Of course, Sunday at Icon Park, it was a Belter of a day yesterday in Melbourne. Yeah, like, it was really dead good. set day for it. As Hawthorne four eight thirty two defeated by the Brisbane Lions six two thirty eight in, I think the best contest yeah. of the four finals. Uh, Brisbane come away with the win as some of us sort of predicted, but I thought Hawthorne pulled up a way better fight than I could ever expect. I thought Hawthorne were going to win. Yeah. I thought they really, really had it in them, and I thought it would have been really good for their confidence for them to get over the line against Brisbane. But Brisbane just showed as well that they've got the depth. It's like what North Melbourne showed um, against Adelaide, that you can contest us all you like, but at the end of the day we're going to get across the line. Not by much, but that's just what a a team with that sort of, um, you know, depth and structure can do. Mm. I think that the umpiring also had like a big, play in that there were some calls that were kind of questionable I reckon towards Brisbane things that were done with Hawthorne that were called for Bris- uh, for Hawthorne and not Brisbane mm-hmm. and um Brisbane got away with a fair few things towards you think the it end happened there. at sort of more crucial moments yeah the, yeah, well, yeah yeah I was running around like a madman doing like live things on Sunday morning early afternoon so I was listening to this game on the radio on the ABC and a few other times like how is this not a free kick to Hawthorne yeah like it's like a couple of times it was like Hawthorne should have got a free kick there yeah. didn't and then like three seconds later ah oh, free kick Brisbane so I think it was Jess Webster, a few others on the on the court, just going, "This is wild." And I know Jess is a Brisbane fan, also, and her brother coaches, her brother coaches Hawthorne. Well. So it's like, uh oh, <laughs> but that does seem to come through because then watching the replay last night, it's like, "Ooh, Hawthorne, a little bit stiff here." Yeah, got got stiffed with a few, didn't they? But also, kick straight. <laughs> it's pretty simple. Yeah. You've had twelve scoring shots to eight you probably should be winning that game of football because it wasn't super breezy yesterday. It was mm-hmm. a great day for footy. But Brisbane just, they felt more relaxed mm. than Hawthorne. Like Hawthorne, this, especially in the second half, they brought their pressure and Hawthorne like, what do we do? A bit more fumbly. Yeah. But Brisbane like, yeah, we know what we're doing. This is fine. They, they, I did think that Hawthorne did get really fumbly under the pressure mm. actually, which we haven't, we haven't seen them – do as much this year. You know, they've been really quite skillful, but, um, yeah, there are a few moments and like there was one point (laughs) yesterday where I was screaming at the TV when that Hawthorne had great end-to-end footy and then Mattia Breed got it and she just like. (laughs) What was that? Yeah, she was doing a bloody Monty Python (laughs) skit and I was just like, oh, my God, grab the ball. And, uh, yeah, it was it was frustrating to watch at times. Mine was more yelling at Dak Davidson, who we love, leading under the football countless times. <laughs> like, Dak, come on, time the leads a little bit better. Or, it's just like, oh, they're right in the head again. What about the kick? No, nah, kick was great. Took mm-hmm. off too early. Mm-hmm. Okay. What are your thoughts, George? <laughs> um, I think Hawthorne played a right in the first half, even yeah. though, like, Brisbane were, like, really relaxed. Mm-hmm. But I think towards, like, especially the fourth quarter, they got a lot of inside 50s, but Brisbane were just marking them, like, left, right, and center, mm-hmm. and kicking it straight back out. Mm-hmm. So it was very back and forth. It felt like Jade Ellinger was everywhere mm. for a period of time. It was like, footy again, footy again, footy again. It's like, how, how are you continue? Like, I know Jade Ellinger finds a lot of the footy, but it's like, how is she continuously getting free and finding it? It's like, just off half back, she was just running through. It's like... Hmm. Bray Conan was off the charts yeah. as well. It was just like there was just a wall in defense. Mm. And then it's like Ali Anderson's slow start works into the game. Yeah. Uh, well, Smith had to get up the ground to try and get a couple of touches early yeah. as well. So it's like Brisbane, like, uh, we're not quite on here, but yeah. we're going to find a way. And that's 
That's what the good teams do. Yeah. They find a way. Well, the Sparks as well. Oh, my God. They were ridiculous. <laughs> they were so good. I did like how everyone was like, oh, you know, the Brisbane's need a spark. More like a spark. Oh, like that. Yeah, I was like, yeah, well done, and people. they're so ripped too. Yeah, like they've got guns. I was just like, oh, I want my arms if, to look yeah, like Yeah, if you, but if you live in Queensland and it's that warm, you just get jacked by living oh, there. Oh, yeah, and you get tanned. Yeah. And yeah, okay. yeah, everyone has abs up there and we hate you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't hate you. So my – no, I don't either. I'm joking. My main thing to take away from this is – there's got to be more to this fight after the game than just a... Uh, yeah, so what happened? Talk me through the fight. Did you see it? The biffo at the end? The end. Because you were there, actually, weren't you? Yeah, I'm not sure what exactly happened, but I know that McDonough got a little bit annoyed with everybody. Oh, McDonough always gets annoyed with really everybody. <laughs> if you're going to get annoyed, you're going to need to kick more than one goal one and make one contested mark. Yeah. <laughs> Whack. Um, but it was... Uh, I just spaced on who used to play for blood, uh, Bates. It was, it was to do with Bates. Was it? Yeah. So ba- the X line obviously in There's there. There's a couple of them in there yeah. though. So it was Batesy in there as well, but I think uh, uh, Tilly was in there as well. Oh, getting, yeah. Getting Tilly in Lugas, amongst yeah, it. Yeah, they'd get in there. But it's just like after the game, it's like, Brisbane, like, yeah, we've won, but it just it just started mm. and it had to do – it seemed like the Brisbane players were going after Batesy and Bates was like, nah, not having this I'm after a go loss. I'm going to rewatch it. You need to rewatch it because I think there's more to it than this is my old team and then this is like, you know, a rivalry. There's something that we don't know that's happened, mm. which is like basically I want to fight all of you. Yeah. And then the Irish girls would have been up and about yeah. as well for a fight. So that's, But it's probably not what you want to see after a game. No, it's like, absolutely what I want to see. It is. I, I'm for the Biffo I'm, every I'm single pro time. i Biffo, but when there hadn't been much Biff during the game, doing it after the game when you've lost, this isn't doing Hawthorne's reputation much good. As a whole, for you know, all the carry on after when they lost to Port Adelaide, and, yeah, I know, but and, that was um, like Sicily going on like a tool bag. Yeah, but that's the men's. That's it has nothing to do with this. Yeah, but it's like they've, they've you know, nah. all the talk, all the talk of them having a soft draw. They come up against a good team and they lose. It's like I can understand why. Nah, you know? Biffo's good. I love Biff. I've been all for it. My team started most fights this year. It's been great. Yeah, we've been losing, but we win fights. Mm. It's uh, but also we probably need to talk about uh the bump. On Bell Doors when she's cleaned up uh, Kemp, mm. nothing. I don't. I know that she's gone down, and I've been all year. If you if you hit someone in the head, you've got to go. I thought she was going for the footy, and it's accidental contact. Yes, agreed. Yeah, we agree on something. Look at us. Oh. This is growth. Oh, it's nice. Hmm. What was it like at the ground? Those it sounded very loud coming through the TV. Yeah, it was quite loud. The Brisbane um, fan base there was quite loud on the bench side, but they were on the Hawks side of the bench, which we thought was really strange. Interesting. So, like, when you go and choose, like, shade there? Which, no, I got burnt on my nose <laughs> and my arms, but yeah. the fake tan hides it. Oh, nice. But yeah, my boyfriend, his whole face is all red, but not even facing the direction of the sun. Sun was crazy. Um, mm. But yeah, they were really loud. And then at the fourth quarter, all the Hawks supporters went and stood near the goal. So every time, like, they were down, everyone's like, everyone's screaming, kick it, kick yeah. it. Because it's the good thing about Icon Park with the way that that stand's done. The mm. noise carries through. I saw people saying, oh, you've popped in the fake noise. Like, no, I was there Friday. It gets plenty loud <laughs> yeah, yeah, when there's 4,000 there. Yeah. So uh, fan bases after this game, Brisbane just like, this is what we do. Yeah. We win finals. Yep. And we do it at Icon Park. Yep. And Hawthorne like, hmm, okay, better not straight sets it. Um, Hawthorne just need to tighten up a, a couple of things and get a couple of better calls from the umpires. I reckon we stand the pressure. <laughs> yeah. Yep. hundred percent. Mm. All right, George, good stuff. Hawthorne, they can bounce back next week, can't they? They better. <laughs> I want them to. <laughs> That's a threat. And she's just going to go off right now and start typing up an angry email getting ready for next week. Thanks, George. Thanks, George. All right, we welcome back in the stats guy. He's rested. He's recovered because we need to talk about the game of the weekend, Albertson Oval, Port Adelaide, 11-6-72, defeated Richmond, 7-6-48. I got everything I needed in a final out of this. I had a Katie Brennan dribble kick goal. I had Teeks back in. I had Schultz doing a thing. I had a great crowd, and I saw Richmond getting beaten. So, Brian, it can go, yeah, suckers. High scoring game. I actually, Lots of highlights. This game was amazing. It was really, really yeah. good. I, it was such a good watch. And it I was. think Richmond just got outplayed and just ran out of ran out of steam at the end. Um, their coach very, very blatantly at the at the end of the game just said they were beaten around the contest. They made fundamental errors at really crucial moments. 
and they ran out of legs. There and was, yeah, even at the start when, obviously they were in it at the start, but there was a few like miss kicks inside 50. Like if some of their gun players just missing the easy targets, mm -hmm. missing easy handballs, and that's probably cost them. And then every time Richmond looked like they were back in it, like, oh, they could make a little comeback, Paul would go bang, bang, or that, yeah. that bow goal that was on the half-time yeah. buzzer. Oh, yeah. Awesome finish. Yeah. But that was like Richmond looked like, oh, they might go into the second half here with a bit of momentum. Yeah. And then Paul would just kick a, kick a goal. Yeah. Awesome. He said like late in, late in the quarters, they really sort of switched gave off. up. Yeah, they switched off. Mm. And there's like, you know, two minutes to go, they had possession, and yeah. then they gave it up. And it's like, yeah. no, you hold on to the footy. Yeah. Um, and you just shut it down. And that, that's what I said leading into this game. If Richmond can hold on to possession and, and that, you yeah. know, keep the ball, they've got a really good chance of getting on top of this. But mm -hmm. if it gets scrappy, if there's contested ball, absolutely the Port Adelaide are just going to run all over it. They're feeling confident. They had Teeks back in. They had Schultz, you know. That didn't take Teeks long to find a form. Oh, she, she's so good. She's, she's improved so much as well. I was at home going, yeah. Teeks! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and my partner was doing something. She's like, what happened? I was like, no, nah, footy, footy. <laughs> <laughs> Two goals. <laughs> it was really good. Um, Port Adelaide have now won um, seven games in a row this season, having only managed three wins and two draw draws across two previous seasons. That's so good. So, so say, how yeah. good is, that's yeah. awesome. They, they that was their first have, ever. Yeah. yeah, first ever final. They've now F joined like, I final think there's like seven teams. First ever yeah. final, Second uh, highest ever score as well. Good time Port. to so do it. Good time to do it. They just, yeah. everything was clicking for them in terms of offense. Like there yeah. was so many different goal kickers, people kicking two or three goals. How yeah. was, was it, Saint kicking Saint three, was three yeah. Houghton two. So you had Schultz with 18 possessions, Dowrick with 17, Lammy with 16. Um, so shared, Saint yeah. had three goals, 16 possessions, and Houghton had two goals and 13 possessions. I was like, also going to say how sick was Wenland's curler from the uh, clearance oh, yeah. as well. Yeah. I was like, what are you going to do? What are you, oh my God, it happened. Yeah. yeah. Because you don't really see clearance goals like that yeah. much in the W. It's like that running was, away, awesome. left foot snap. It's like, yeah. yes. Yeah. Huge. Yes. G-Train was awesome for Richmond. Three goals. Like yeah, just finishing really their chances. Yeah. Where, it might yeah. not have come down there as much, obviously, uh, as poor, but yeah. finishing her chances. Yes, this she year got a couple. Missed, it, miss missed an easy up. one. Yep. That was a bit frustrating. Yep. Uh, Brennan did a hammy. And then defensively, though, Paul were really good in the midfield. They only allowed Egan and McKenzie to have three clearances combined. Mm. Uh, she Sheeran was really good. 22 yeah. disposal, seven clearances. But, and then Conti was pretty solid as well. Yeah. Uh, but outside of that, uh, sort of depth players – didn't really step up in the midfield mm -hmm. of the, the Tigers. Yeah, this is a this is more about how good Port were, like stepping up to finals intensity. Like, yeah, it was great. Yeah, yeah. I felt like they were just ready. Like they always come out with that intensity. Their tackling pressure is really good, mm -hmm. but they just seemed. I feel like composed. Yeah, and 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 inspired by yep. what they've been able to achieve. The crowd as still, well, and still like. having that that underdog. Mm. Um, mentality yep. and they just they just nailed it yeah and port fan fans like this is sick we yeah. can definitely beat hawthorne if yeah. we do this yeah like they're yeah. up and about oh i don't know oh, no, you would be if you I think they, it's doable i think yeah. it's doable but because they're gonna they're feeling invincible they've won seven in a row they've belted richmond mm. and they're coming up against a hawthorne team who there's, True. there's some knockers about i don't think you know you can knock them too much after it'll be a good right game now. i'll agree with that this yeah. is gonna be a great game and mm. richmond fans like Missed opportunity. Yeah, massively. Yeah. Don't they yeah. dropped off second don't half lose of the year. to yeah. a West Coast in round one. Yeah. yeah. Go back to that one. Yeah. Yeah. Expected more. I think, yeah, big off season for them. It'll be interesting to see what moves they make as well. Potential mm -hmm. for trade period. They got a good list and they I feel like it just didn't click on the weekend in terms of some of the disposals and things like that. But yeah. that happens. Yeah. All right, let's get to the tipping results of the yes. weekend. Two super geniuses went four for four. Yes. Mm -hmm. four Who did four. I pick? Uh, you picked, I think, Hawthorne. Oh, and I did. I went. And oh, Essendon. Oh, did I pick Essendon? Yeah. yeah. Did I? Yeah. Fascinating. <laughs> you had a really oh, we, long we can week. take it up with uh, Social Girl. Well, no, yeah. this, was on the, uh, this was on the... The socials? Uh, yeah, yeah, the socials. Mm. Uh, and Spence also got two. So I think I've just jumped up into third. If we were keeping oh, Greg... Yeah, past, we're, uh, we're keeping Greg Olivia. in finals. Yeah, I was... I was oh, wait, I'm, that means I'm up by two. Yeah. Let's go. You're you're cooked, mate. <laughs> <laughs> you're cooked, mate. There, there's, there's five games to go and you're down by two. No, that's all right. I got it in me. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I uh, Full credit, best team of the round. Who did we see over the weekend that was the best team of the round? Well, it's quite clearly the team that kicked the biggest score and had the biggest win, and it is the Port Adelaide Power. I also said Port Adelaide. Nice. <laughs> North, let's go. Boo. We got the job done over Adelaide. People, yeah, you're at home. Adelaide Shut up. Uh, and, we're at home. We're at Icon Park. Yeah, you're at home. We hardly play there. Victoria, one game a <laughs> year. Uh, Mim Strom was quite clearly the best player of the weekend. Yeah, I'd say. Ooh. Yeah, 
In terms of stats, yes. Yeah. I'd say Ash Saint was up there just yeah. set up. Like, not only kicked three goals, set up a lot. Riddell. Had, uh, yeah, Riddell was could really give, good. Could give Riddell a shout out. Yeah. But yeah, um, I'm, I'm going Ash Saint from yeah. Port because I think, yeah, she was the catalyst for their, for their win. I'm, I'm giving Saint. Nice. With a special mention to Houghton. Yeah, fair. Houghton as well, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I like that. <laughs> All right. That is us done and dusted for AFLW today for, well, today. So we'll be back on Thursday to preview the two semi finals. That is when I'll have a massive crack at the AFL for their scheduling of these semi-finals. I'm going to save that one up <laughs> what a surprise. Thursday and let the anger build over the next three days. Thanks to Bryony for jumping on and surviving. You deserve to sleep for a week. I will have a personality next you episode. You absolutely killed it last week. <laughs> Thank like, you. Right well, everything you did. Saw you on TV a bunch. Uh, judging uh, the fashions on the field. You're doing gigs left I hosted. Right and I didn't judge. Sorry, hosted. hosted. <laughs> but I did meet one of the judges, Elizabeth Hurley. Yes, I saw that. Oh, wow. So quite clearly that's Elizabeth a, Hurley asked for a photo with you. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I had to get past her security. Did you? Yeah. What, does, she, does she have like just like a full on? She had two guys with her. Oh. Big yeah. hulking dudes? Uh, like. You could take them. Old grumpy dudes. <laughs> uh, okay. Do you know what I mean? That's Who boring. were just like not going to yeah. find this charming at all. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Cool. Speaking of not charming, thank you to the stats oh, guy. Oh, says you, mate. There, there we go. I see you. Yeah, you really <laughs> did. Of course, thanks to Jord for jumping on. Killed it with the Hawthorne takes this week. So she'll be back next week as well because next Monday for the review show, I won't be here. I am actually taking a couple of days off next week. Thank God for that. How? dare you in the middle of the finals in the middle of the finals (laughs) my girlfriend would stab me if i didn't take these three days off so yeah well i'll I'll take them off then that'd be be great a little scheduling issue that might want to be re-looked at (laughs) you can talk to her about that one (laughs) do you want do you want want to take time off in the men's finals yeah no yes i did i missed the show (laughs) you probably did yeah i did uh do you want do you still want baked goods Yes. Yeah, there you go. All right, we'll catch you on Thursday for the uh, preview of the two semifinals. Until then, look after yourselves and remember, Woody's back.